Well, hello. In this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how I import our entire playlist into ProPresenter in less than 10 seconds with song and song arrangements. Now, there are two components to this. There's Planning Center Online and ProPresenter, and then, of course, the database that we use in both of them. So first, I'm going to show you what my workflow looks like for Sunday morning. It's Thursday. We're getting ready for rehearsal. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the ProPresenter application. I'm running the latest version of ProPresenter 7, although this does work in ProPresenter 6, it just looks a little different. Now, obviously we like to keep things nice and tidy with folders and libraries, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the Sunday folder. I'm going to scroll down to the appropriate date, of course from September. I'm going to highlight that folder, and I'm going to come up here to this plus button. Go ahead and click New Planning Center Service, and I will just, like here I will be able to see all of our service types for our entire church. I'm going to go ahead and click on Worship. Click on the wrong window there. I'm going to click on Worship, and then I'm going to go ahead and choose this Sunday. Now, depending on your internet connection, it might take a little bit of time if it's downloading assets or if there's new arrangements or new items. Um, but usually this takes, uh, looks like we might have some new content today, but normally this takes a second or two. Sweet, and now pretty much everything has been downloaded. So I can see my playlist right here. And if I go ahead and click uh, the arrangements button, or excuse me, the arrangements button, I can see that I have uh, my arrangement right from Planning Center. And this is what was built out right there. I know it is a bug that it's not auto selecting these, that uh, it's supposed to be fixed in a later software update, as well as the duplicates. Um, but this is instrumental in our workflow and helps us do this really quickly. So I got that, got uh, four songs. Um, so I'm going to do it on the fourth one. And then one of the things that it will also do is it will try to match things in your library. So we don't have, it doesn't always work, so we'll go and click unlink on there. And I'm just going to drag in uh, Sunday, walk in, and just drop that there. I'll do the same with offering. And actually do the same with announcements to try to drag those in. I'll just grab my offering. And there we go, drag offering in. And then do the same with teaching, so I'm going to click on link. And I'll add these in, uh, these items in later, but it's just easy to drag them in. Whether it's a video, you can drag the video right in, or you can uh, create a presentation. And that is how it works. And it makes it super easy for volunteers and for um, just building out your events in general. Now, as to the mechanics of how this works, there's a couple pieces. Now, I'm going to show you the first piece. The most important piece is to make sure that you and your worship team agree on what, where you are getting your songs from. Maybe your church uses multi-tracks, maybe you use Song Select, maybe you use a different provider, maybe you use GuitarTabs.com. Whatever you use, you need to have a standard. Um, for us, it's multi-tracks. Uh, we standardize on them. And the reason for that is not everyone agrees on what a verse 2 is or what a chorus is. And you may have a song where they say, you know, verse 1 and verse 2, uh, on one website is the same thing as verse one on another website, and that can create a lot of problems and confusion. And so, um, for us, we use multi tracks and uh, we build everything out exclusively based upon what's in multi tracks. So, um, and we also use the playback app. If you don't have to use multi tracks, just make sure that you and your worship team agree on what you're using. And if you ever can't find a particular song, make sure you communicate on that. Uh, what's really nice is that you don't have to purchase anything for multi tracks. So if I go for, you know, we'll just look for, oops. particular song, like goodness of God, um, I can actually go and grab the, I can either buy ProPresenter files, which is probably the easiest way to do it, or if I want to build it up manually and save $2 for every song, I can just copy and paste all the content here and build out, build out my song files according to this. Now, we will have to use some creative liberty. Sometimes maybe they call it chorus again, which we'll call it chorus too. Establish some rules. Just really make sure you have good communication when you add a song. That's the most important part about the system is whenever you add a song, communicate with your worship team. But once you get it in there, you're done. The other component is you need to go to Planning Center and either integrate it with multi-tracks or whatever provider you're using for um, for your services. So for us, it's multi-tracks. So I'll show you what that looks like. If I go to today's set list, is this today? Uh, yes, it is this Sunday. So um, if I click on the files here, um, I can see that what I have here are all multi-tracks content. 
and the worship leader has built out this arrangement in Planning Center. That's the other cool, really cool thing about the system, is it enables the worship leader to dictate very dynamically how they're going to play the song. Now, this gets into the conversation of what about spontaneity? Well, I believe that spontaneity is actually when you divert from a plan, not from when you simply don't have a plan. And so our philosophy here is we have a plan every Sunday. We have an arrangement that we follow. We're on a clicking guide. But in the event that um, the worship pastor feels that he needs to enter back into a song, for whatever reason, the spirit is stirring in that way, he has every capability to keep the click rolling and go back into any part. And when that happens, we use hotkeys on our keyboard to, to maneuver back into the song, and we're fully capable of doing that because we're not locked into this. As long as we do that first or initial arrangement, and really, we could break away from that. It's just on stage, they typically use a guide, so they wouldn't be able to do that. But again, there's really, there's obviously a spectrum here of how free you want. I think we've hit a really good spot where we have that freedom, but we also have a plan. So, um, and the way he builds those out, or she, is that you come into here on each song, and it actually is, I'm going to be honest, it's a little different now with the new Planning Center interface, but you click on the song, and you can see we have these different uh, linked songs, different arrangements. So um, you can see that I can add an arrangement, but we just have one called Sunday Default. And I think it's under Details now. No, it's under Song. Yes, under Song, I can edit this arrangement, and you can see we have all these things here. We have Intro, Vamp, Verse 1, all this stuff here. Now, this one's actually needs to be fixed because there's something that's wrong here. We always have our worship leaders add this. And what that does is it lets us have a separate slide in ProPresenter. And we could obviously add it, but it just saves us a step um, with all of our settings. Maybe the intro gets repeated. Now, we don't want to refresh the background if the intro gets repeated. We also go ahead and have a separate slide for copyright. Because, well, while you could use outro as, while you could certainly use outro as your ending, um, some songs actually have lyrics tied to an outro. Because in Planning Center, it doesn't care what the song label is, it, or the item label is, it will just put it at the last slide. So if you have an outro that has the lyrics on it, and that's your last slide item, well, guess what? You're going to have lyrics over top of, uh, or excuse me, copyright over top of that lyric, and that's not fun at all. So we're going to go ahead and update that. We're going to update the arrangement sequence. A little bit of a confusion, confusing piece here, excuse me. Planning Center calls it arrangements. Um, uh, ProPresenter calls them sequences. Uh, actually, no, that's backwards. They, they used to call them sequences in Planning Center. Now, ProPresenter called them arrangements. Now, they're both called arrangements. So We're going to save that, and we just updated that. Uh, make, it's a good word, a good idea when, you, when you're working with a new worship leader who hasn't done this method or you're learning how to do this, this workflow. Um, every week, just sit down for the first couple weeks and make sure all this looks good. Uh, there's some simple steps like this, like the settings tab. It just makes things a lot easier. So, all right, we got the first couple steps. We have our worship team on us agreeing on where we're getting our songs from. We're making sure we both follow that. Um, I uh, went in and planning pro, pro presenter and built everything out here according to multi-tracks. Now we need to tie the two together. And the way that we do that is we go to pro presenter, preferences, and then we need to go over to services. Services, that's it. And here's where we can log in a planning center. So. I like to create what's called a service account. Basically, it's a dedicated account. It's not a personal account um, dedicated to this. We have one in our organization called uh, uh, Planning Center uh, Creative Arts Click and Sync, a clock and sync, and that ties our, us into the clock. Actually, if you're already using the clock on the back wall for Purpose Center, you probably already have uh, yourself logged in here. But it's a good idea to make that service account just in case if it's a volunteer account and they leave or they reset their password, it doesn't stop working. Um, now you can see the settings that I have here. I've automatically checked for plan updates, match songs in library. I can show historical plans, but that just is confusing. Uh, and then match arrangements from sequences. So yeah, Pro Presenter calls them arrangements, Planning Center calls them sequences, and I can automatically upload or download presentations and media. This is really cool if you want to get in that workflow where you're putting everything into Planning Center and you're downloading even the video content. I found it doesn't work super great when you have a number of slides because in, as long as you have one graphic or one image per item in Planning Center, works great. But when you have, for example, like with us, you have you know announcements which are offering, which are offerings right, offerings missing here. Oh, here it is, offering. You have offering here, offering a celebration. We have like five slides there. So that doesn't work for us because ProPresenter will just download the first one. So if you want to get really granular and have one item per each slide, that's awesome, that would work perfect, and it works great for video, um, but we just found for us these other items like the teaching, the announcement video, while we put those in Planning Center just for the sake of people being able to see them, it just works easier just to, we have a local server that I connect to and we just throw them in there. But for the songs, which might change every week, 
um, because we you know don't just play by the book every week. Um, this is a great technique. And um, with that change, I'll go ahead and actually show you what that looks like. I'll go ahead and delete my playlist. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, X out of here. And I'll reopen Pro Presenter. Always uh, reopen Pro whenever you need to do a redo of sync. I don't know why that is the case, but it seems to work uh, much better. So I'll fire Pro back up. Alrighty, so now I'm going to go ahead and go back to our Sunday playlist, 2021 20, Sundays. Also, don't be afraid to start over, by the way. Uh, when we initially made this transition, we deleted our entire song database um, because it was just simply too messy. I'm going to go to Worship, and fingers crossed, I should see the Settings tab. Now, sometimes it doesn't always update right away. I'm going to have to wait a minute, but uh, we should see that shortly. And usually it doesn't take this long to sync, but for, of course, when you go to film tutorial, uh, things don't always go as they as, as planned. So, Awesome. So we get Liberator in, and look at that settings right there. So um, actually, it looks like it even synced it up. Oh no, it didn't. Did it? Or we'll go and click, click, click. Boom. Settings. Awesome. Um, so this looks like it pulled everything that we had. So uh, word of advice: switching this workflow is a huge help for us. I will say it does add a lot more work on the front end. So make sure you have a time to do that transition. Otherwise, you're just going to be frustrated. But in the long run, it really does save a lot of time, and it helps the worship leader have control of how they're going to lead the service, but also make sure that they're planning well and helping tech succeed with making them succeed. So hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or reach out to me directly.